My mother's 15 times magnifying mirror was encompassed by a ring of fluorescent light, the kind that highlights your imperfection in dressing room mirrors and makes your cellulite look like the cavities of a giant, <laughs> but still somehow manages to wash out all of your good features. Several nights a week, I'd watch my mother as she gripped Revlon tweezers in her hand and studied her face in front of that fluorescent mirror. You don't have a mustache, Mom, I said. That's not what I'm looking for. You'll understand when you're older, she said. But I was older. I was 19 and living at home while my friends were at college because I'd spent my senior year telling everyone I was going to be a famous actress or a missionary. <laughs> and when you're so focused on fame and faith, college prep courses take the back seat where priorities are concerned. I was a hipster Christian with scripture tattooed on the back of my neck and constantly over-interpreting indie song lyrics to be about God. <laughs> I'd recently quit my eighth new job. I'd adopted the motto, God doesn't want me here. <laughs> my parents decided I needed to learn a skill other than filling out job applications every two weeks. Something I could eventually earn a physical in feasible income on, to focus on, to be good at, or kind of good at, or could be good at, hair. Ever since I was old enough to use scissors made of metal instead of plastic, hair was trial and error for me. I cut my hair, I cut Barbie's hair, I dumped Clorox on my head, and once the blisters healed and I learned all I needed was in a box at the drugstore, there wasn't a single color that didn't saturate this mane. Beauty school didn't seem like a bad idea. It was a direction, a chance to find a career. So I wasn't famous or a missionary, but I could be a hairdresser for Jesus. <laughs> I'd preach about God's love to my clients, and they'd come see me weekly just to hear about my spiritual wisdom. I'd hold baptisms in my rinsing bowl. <laughs> and I could tell my friends, Oh, really? You're getting a degree in fine arts? I'm studying to be an artist, too. A hair and makeup artist. Don't worry. I'll hook you up when you're in town. I'd wink. <laughs> I made an appointment with the automated system at the Palomar Institute of Cosmetology. You have to take a test in order to enroll. Basic math, questions that require common sense, and a high school level of critical thinking. Test day arrived. As I walked into the stucco building, the aroma of home perms and old lady perfume infused my nostrils. The woman at the front desk had what I'd refer to as DMV etiquette. <laughs> I gave her my name and she slid the paperwork across the counter. I passed the test and handed her a check from my dad for my books and kit. It was all so official. My alarm went off on my first day of school and I debated back and forth about whether or not to wear makeup. I have rosacea, which is a skin condition that looks exactly like acne, but it's not. And at this point in my life, I still thought it was acne, so I was treating it as such, drying out my skin and causing more flare-ups. I had to cover my reptilian skin in pancake makeup to mask my cosmetic ailment. But this was a place where beauty was created. So I dropped my compact and went to school with a blank canvas for a face. After all, I thought, God created me this way. We had the choice between wearing all black or all white, and because wearing all white seemed cult-like, I went with the darker option. <laughs> I arrived early and took a seat near the back of the class. This was going to be so fun. Making friends with people just like me people with good taste and talent, people that aren't afraid to take risks, people that would come to know Christ through my presence. <laughs> A portly 30-year-old woman entered the room in an ill-fitting white lab coat and faded black slacks. I'd just read the handbook the night before, and we weren't supposed to mix the colors. Exactly, I thought. A woman who wasn't afraid to take risks. Another woman followed her, probably 18 years old, blonde, kind of clean cut compared to her friend. Isn't he so adorable, she said. She was holding up a picture of her son, and there wasn't a ring on her finger. That's really nice, I thought, 
a single mother furthering her education to support her son, that's really commendable. Living proof that God won't give you more than you can handle. <laughs> He's finally on formula so I can start drinking again. Thank God. <laughs> she was wearing one of those message t-shirts you'd find at Hot Topic, like, I'm not antisocial, I just don't like you. But hers went a different route with, I fucked your boyfriend. Seeing as though Jesus was my boyfriend, I found this incredibly offensive. I was going to be a hairdresser for the Lord, and this sort of fashion statement was the opposite of what a godly woman would wear. The portly one threw her leg up on a table and stretched. Hey, I can put my leg pretty high up for a fat bitch, she bragged. These women scared me the same way the kids in Saturday school did. Where they were in school for vandalism and I was in for forging a PE note. I didn't know what would happen. I didn't want to know what would happen if I looked at them the wrong way. The room filled up with several more students. Everyone knew one another. They stood in the middle of the classroom like loitering teenagers exchanging inside jokes. No one introduced themselves to me. Lunchtime arrived and nearly the entire class made a plan to head to Carl's Jr. together. I made a plan to eat alone in my car, and I did. I apathetically chewed on a PB&J. My little born-again Christian bubble had completely burst. I never got to talk about Jesus. I wiped the tears from my eyes and said a little prayer. Give me a sign. Point me in the direction of your desire. I headed back to class. The instructor stood in front of the class. Now we're going to talk about skin tone for a, a bit. It plays a key role in hair color selection, she said. Seated in the back, I was relieved because my rosacea definitely would have attracted some attention. Let's get someone really fair up here so I can show you what I mean, she continued. I've had nightmares like this before in which I'm called up in front of a class and my flaws are pointed out like I'm some kind of sideshow wonder. And I'm here to tell you today that dreams do come true. <laughs> you, there, the blonde in the back, come on up, she said. Yes, that was me there in the back and I was coming on up. Blushing, because ro with rosacea, you're always blushing. Now this young lady here has some extremely hard skin to work with. It's got a red hue to it. She traced my face with a laser pen. All the way to the jawline and then it just stops like a mask. This is the type of skin that light blonde doesn't really work with. As you can see, it highlights the red pigment, pigment in her skin. Everyone stared at me like hospital interns. You can sit down now, thank you. Who did this lady think she was? Only I can talk about my shitty skin. <laughs> this was the most attention I'd received the entire day and it was an acknowledgement of my hor com horrible complexion and my poor choice in hair color. I was the before model for all of them to take note of as a cosmetic red flag. I made my way to my seat, pulling my hair over the sides of my face. I could feel their eyes taking in every enlarged blood vessel and blackhead. I watched the clock tick for the next hour until class was over. At home, I washed my face and took a seat in front of my mother's 15 times magnification mirror and switched on the fluorescent light. Everything was huge. Every pore, every scar, and I had a beard. Sure, a blonde beard, but why didn't anyone tell me? No one, not a, hey, you might want to get waxed. Nothing, I've been surrounded by liars my entire life. I started plucking my chin, but it was an unfair fight between the tweezers and those strands holding onto the root like lice. I'm in cosmetology school for God's sake, and I'm walking around like I'm just taking a break from the circus. I grabbed my wallet and headed out to Long's drugstore. The pre-wax strips didn't look like they'd suffice for destroying this follicle fest, so I went with the microwave kit. <laughs> 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 
After a few minutes in the microwave and a prime seat in front of the magnification mirror, I was ready to take control of this peach fuzz on steroids. I painted my chin with the hot wax and pressed a strip over it. I'd always gone by the rule that if it burns, that means it's working. <laughs> and this was really working. I counted down and ripped it off. It felt like a swarm of fire ants were attacking my chin. I looked in the magnification mirror. Whisker free. Yep. All of that unwanted hair was gone. But so was my skin. I couldn't even see hair on the wax strip, just a fleshy replica of a fruit roll-up. I'd spent years bathing my face in alcohol-based face wash, drying out what I thought was acne. And when that hot wax hit my dry skin, it was like a supercharged carrot peeler. I saturated my face with Neosporin and took a double dose of ibuprofen to make the swelling go down. My alarm went off and I hesitantly looked in the mirror. No hair, but I had what looked like a chin strap rash without the athletic excuse. I put the pancake makeup all over, but it just looked like powdered blisters. There's no hiding it. And I didn't want my skin turned into an example of imperfection again. And with the way I screwed this procedure up, I couldn't possibly re be responsible for other people's hair. I pulled into the parking lot, headed to the front desk, and placed my kit on the counter. I'd like to withdraw from the program, I said. That same charming woman slid the paperwork across the counter, and after I signed it, it, she, ha signed it she handed me a refund. I was a beauty school dropout, <laughs> heading home to look up remedies on the internet, hoping to make my skin heal faster. I was back at square one, ready to start filling out job applications again. I wasn't going to be a hairdresser for Jesus, Buddha, the devil, or Darwin, <laughs> because faith wasn't going to change the fact that I was fucking clueless. <laughs> Esther Woodman.